care about it. Feedback. Someone could turn their mics off. Everybody could turn their mics off. Thank you. Um, we are three, four, thirty, an hour, two and a half hours behind schedule. So I um, we and we will be voting on the legislative packet on our November fourth, November fifth board meeting. So today. Um, I would ask, um, well, first of all, I, I guess I should call roll again to make sure everybody is here. Um, so, um, Ms. Keys Gamaro? Gamara? Sorry. Ms. Omesh? Here. Ms. Tolan? I'm here, thank you. Ms. Corbett Sanders? Glad to be here. Mr. Frisch. Hello. Ms. Cohen. Here. Ms. McLaughlin. Here. Ms. Marin. Ms. Sizemore Heiser. And Dr. Anderson. I'm here. All right, so it looks like we have everyone but two right now. Um, so what I would like to do is I would like to remind everyone, and I'm sorry, I'm getting my notes here, that um, where we are today is we have talked about um, at, our, at an earlier work session, our priority positions as far as, um, as far as our complete packet is concerned. Where we are today are we are looking at um, a looking at the discussion drafts basically for the state priorities as well as our federal priorities. And I think the best way to do it at since we've been working so long is to just talk about where we are and how we um, and if we could pull up maybe first, Miss um, Malberg, a document that says Fairfax County School Board draft. 2021 state priority positions. And so that's the document we'll first be working on, and then we will work on the same same document, a little less large for the federal positions. And I will let um, Ms. Corbett Sanders go through that. But for this one, a reminder, um, these priority positions started a little while ago as to help our our, our NOVA delegation understand because we have such a comprehensive and robust um, uh, state uh, priority positions in our packet that they just kind of wanted to be alerted to what are your priorities. So based upon the conversations you had with Mr. Malloy, based upon the, the board discussion we had at our earlier work session, um, Mr. Malloy, um, and I came up with, based upon what you had told us, near-term funding and policy priorities, as well as continued long-term funding policy and priorities. And what I would ask my colleagues to do at this point, if you have clarifying questions um, that Mr. Malloy can help you with um, based upon these priorities, or if you have, or in general, agreement to this, or if there's, or if there's an item here where you're like, I don't think this should be in our priority position now. We don't have to decide today. Um, we are voting on our comprehensive packet on the 5th. But this position papers, while we could vote it on the 5th, we could come to general consensus. Remember, again, this is not our priority. This is not our full packet. These are things to help our state delegation. So we can come after the fact, right before so November 23rd, when we meet with our um, delegation, um, adjusting priorities. So today, I would ask you to look at them with that lens, questions about um, if you clarifying questions, anything that you think is missing, anything you think should be added. And we will start with the um, state priorities. And Mr. Malloy, I would like you to speak um, to clarify anything that um, I miss, might have misspoken about. My video turned on here, sorry. 
Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I actually think that uh, Ms. Garnett Kofax kind of covered uh, covered where we are. Um, this is a reminder, as part of the agenda item, what we posted, we posted four different documents. We posted um, a, a revised version of the full legislative program. So that includes not only the strike through draft that we talked about on October 20th, but it also incorporated all of the board additions that we had talked about at that session as well. So now that's all been combined into a single document. When you look through that, it's not technically a strike through document anymore because I removed all the strike through language, but I left all of the underlines so you can go through the program still and see where all the additions were. Um, in addition to that, uh, we updated the what happened chart. So again, everything that, that's been changed is documented in that chart. Um, all of the page numbers, all of the references back to uh, to uh, position numbers and names. They've all been updated, so you should be able to go back and forth. Um, what you have in front of you today in terms of the priorities is state priority document, federal priority document. The only real difference on the federal priority document is that I added in the references to where you would find those individual positions in the legislative program. State legislative priority document that you're looking at is a little bit different than the first one that you saw. Um, the, the initial paragraph has been rewritten a little bit. Um, in fact, I pulled language from a couple of different places uh, from within the legislative program. Um, and it's, it's essentially a, a basic statement of philosophy that education needs to be a partnership between the state and the uh, and, and local government um, and you all as a local school board, uh, but that you all at the end of the day should retain the flexibility to be able to implement policies. Um, Going forward on the document, uh, when I discussed this with, with Ms. Darren at Kofax, we decided to kind of split up positions a little bit uh, to identify some things that are really kind of immediate, immediate needs or immediate term uh, issues. Uh, as everybody keeps saying, this is a different year. This is a year unlike any others. Um, the board has adopted a set of priorities every year since 2013. Uh, they've looked relatively similar. They focus on funding. They focused on kind of big picture, longer term types of things. This is more of an attempt to kind of keep that spirit of the program priorities in the longer term side, but here on the near term side uh, to focus in on some of the issues that we talked about in terms of, of the pandem pandemic related flexing flexibilities, the policy flexibilities, the funding resources that are needed. Uh, things related to technology, because obviously everything we do is related to technology at this point. Uh, open meeting laws, that was, I, I know, an efficiency question that you all had brought up repeatedly in your meetings with me. Um, and then I did pull a couple of the state funding formula pieces, and just so you understand the near term versus the longer term. The near term, the ones that I identified have a relatively smaller price tag. Um, and also, I think are a little bit more directly targeted to their facts in terms of cost competing, which is targeted only to Northern Virginia localities. And then um, the, uh, the, the discussion about resources for school divisions, not only based on percentages, but also based on absolute numbers of students. Um, so those two are there. And then the other state funding formula positions uh, got moved to the long term. And those are the big ticket items. Those are the things like uh, eliminating the, the support cap, which would be about $300 million a year at the state level. Um, so that's the, the rationale behind the split. All right, thank you, Mr. Malloy. Um, and it looks as though we have started to get some questions. So I'll start with Ms. Kieskamar. Ms. Kieskamara. All right, um, I will go to Ms. Marin. Sorry, I didn't even have my hand. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks. Um, so I know that this obviously takes a lot of work and we heard last week all the work and um, we got these at 11 o'clock this morning. We've been in meetings since. I'd like to make a motion to postpone to a certain time the consideration of these docs by the board and move 
the board action scheduled currently for November 5th to December 3rd at the earliest. I'm happy to speak to that further, why those dates. Um, Ms. Marin, did you say to December 3rd? At the earliest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't wait that long on these. Well, well, I'd like to speak to my motion then. All right. Um, we, we, so oh, I'm so sorry, the motion has to be seconded. I need a second. Sure, okay, so, I'm sorry, what was that? We need a second to the motion, Ms. Marin. Okay, D did Dr. Anderson, did you second that or no? No, I was, I had my hand up for another question, um, but I just wanted to share that they needed to be a second, but I did not second the motion. Thank you. I'm happy to repeat it again because I understand people weren't expecting to hear that. Please repeat it. Sure. Um, I move to postpone to a certain time the consideration of these documents by the board later than November 17th. Why that? And to move the board action scheduled currently for November 5th to December 3rd at the earliest. Is there a second? I'm sorry, Ms. Marin, there isn't a second. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Anderson. Thank you, Wait, I just put uh, it on my camera. I'm sorry, Ms. Kofax, my hand was up to second Ms. Marin's motion. All right, and I will go back. I I didn't hear anyone to say second, and there were several hands up. Miss McLaughlin and Dr. Anderson said she was not seconding it, so I assumed you were in the queue to ask questions. All uh, right, okay. so we'll go back. So um, there is a second to the motion. All in favor of? Um, speak to it. Can I speak to it, please? She needs to speak to her motion at this I'm time. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, and, and I think the the confusion we have is just um, an example of how tired we all are since we've been sitting here for six hours now. Um, that is one reason why I'm proposing the motion, because we have been sitting here for six hours, um, and once again, we find ourselves in a place to make, to have very serious discussions after a very long day. Um, secondly, I know I personally have a commitment at six with the school, and others might as well, and I have no idea what time this meeting will end now, and we haven't indicated any schedule for meeting management in that capacity. Third is that we received this at 11 a.m. this morning, and I have not even had a chance to look at this, and I am no way prepared for this discussion. The Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, our joint board meeting is on November 24th. So what I'm proposing to do is take the time now to be able to review these documents, talk together as needed, as people feel um, appropriate, and then meet no later than November 17th, which would give us time to deliberate in public at a work session, staff can finalize documents that we bring in draft to the board meeting on November 24th, and then finalize our documents after having the benefit of the Board of Supervisors discussion on, no, on November 24th, which we then finalize with a vote on December 3rd. I understand it is not ideal, and nothing we are doing is ideal right now is not going to drastically um, improve our, our work product if we rush this. So thank you for the consideration. Ms. McLaughlin, would you like to speak to your second? Uh, I, I support all of the concerns that Ms. Marin um, outlined uh, and would just like to ask Mr. Malloy, can you please speak to why there, why if there would be any problem with accommodating this uh, timeline adjustment? Uh, so I was going to mention two things. One is I do I do want to make a point of clarification that the the content of these documents, both the federal draft and the state draft, while the state draft has been rearranged and the introductory paragraph has been slightly rewritten, these are exactly the same positions that were included on the initial draft discussion document that was that was posted on October twentieth. So this is, I just wanted to make clear that this is, this is the first time you're seeing this particular document in this form. But these positions are exactly the same ones that were included on that. In terms of the timing, uh, the only impediment to changing the timing is that uh, we have invited our delegation to a legislative briefing on November 23rd. 
and typically you will help, you will have finished your legislative program and adopted your priorities prior to having that briefing. And um, I'm not sure if what that would do to the briefing. It would probably require the briefing to be postponed as well. Um, but I did just want to point out that that, that is a uh, another consideration in terms of the conversation. So, Mr. Malloy, um, you and I have had the chance to work for quite some time together. So I think as I understand it, our are meeting with the state legislators the, on the 23rd and then with the board of supervisors the next day, it's not so much that they're going to tell us to change where our positions are. It's mostly for us to inform them that this is where our board is on these topics and then they can just comment as they feel or need to. Is that correct? Yes, the, the briefing is intended as an opportunity for you all to kind of discuss your your issues and your priorities with General Assembly members. It also gives them a, an opportunity to go the other way, which is to tell you all what they're working on and kind of what they see coming up as, as part of the next session. So it's a discussion between the two, but uh, typically that discussion is predicated on the fact that the board has adopted a legislative program so that you have a framework from which to discuss with uh, your delegation. So if I, if I remember from our, our work session, which I believe we had just last week, the, what we agreed at the end of that work session was you would take, we, like we gave the consensus in that work session, which is we're adopting the language that you provided because a lot of it was just updating it and that the greater conversation with the board would be whether we're adding amendments and things. Is, was that your understanding as well or did we the, not get that far? My, my understanding of the consensus was that you had all, all agreed in terms of combining the strike through draft and the board additions into a single mm -hmm. document, which you have as part of this agenda item. Um, and then there was a, a, a secondary, and, and once you got that document, that document would become the basis for the final agenda item uh, for the board on November 5th. Correct. In addition, you all did not spend any time talking about your legislative priorities, and there was a discussion at the time during that work session. You may want to have a second uh, a second opportunity to look a little bit more closely, not at the program itself, but at the priority positions at, in particular. I mean, I think that's where this particular work session came from, was that desire to have an additional conversation about the priorities, which, as you recall, are all pulled from the legislative program itself. There's nothing on this document that's not included in the main legislative program document. This just pulls sure. out a subset so that you can highlight to, you know, to the public, to uh, to our legislators, what your particular priorities are. Thank you. So again, what's in front of us here is just how you understood from the prior work session, but board priorities seem to be for the near-term funding and policy procedures. And this document itself will still come to the board table as the the main motion, but we could amend anything that we're looking at here on the next two pages. Uh, my understanding is at that's correct. Is, is that not, nothing you nothing you do today? What what the goal I think of today would be is to have a, a relative consensus to move state priorities and the federal priorities forward your November 5th meeting, and then you have a full vote of the board on not only the legislative program, but also the specific priorities. And that's all kind of part of the same document um, once you get to that final meeting uh, of the full board. So again, the concern being that if we don't have this, then when we present to the, the state delegates and the board of supervisors, we can't say what our priorities are yet because we didn't vote on them yet. Uh, well, yeah, you would you would not have adopted them at that point. So you could either um, tell them that your priorities are in process and give them an idea of what you're thinking about, or um, you'd need to look at the possibility of moving the date of the legislative briefing a little bit later. One other date to be aware of is, I believe it's November 30th, is that's the last day for legislators to pre-file legislation. Um, so that's another reason why we try to get all of this on and try to get um, board, you all as a board, to adopt the legislative program prior to that, because that gives us a little bit of time to be able to talk to individual legislators to put in pre-filed legislation. Pre-filed legislation tends to have a different 
timeline and a different set of rules than bills that legislators might bring during the session itself. Um, they have much more flexibility in terms of how many and the topics that they can deal with. Um, once you get to the session, they're relatively constrained in terms of the number of bills that they can introduce. Uh, certainly not the only opportunity they have to introduce legislation, um, but it is, it, it's a more flexible time for them to be able to introduce the legislation. It's the worst case scenario if the board did decide that it didn't want to rush through today and, and necessarily rush through next uh, Thursday with, it, with the vote, um, we could postpone it for two weeks and, and do a work session in between. Um, because, uh, Madam Chair, when is the next business meeting after the 5th? Um, one second, I'm pulling it up. The next uh, business meeting after the 5th is the 16th. But I also so, want to articulate one more thing, Ms. McLaughlin, is that we are chock full of work sessions between now and then. I would find it very difficult to find time to um, incorporate another work session on this matter. Just want to be clear about that. Well, I mean, to be honest, I think it's a question of what is time sensitive in all of our upcoming work sessions. And this one certainly is time sensitive, but as noted by Ms. Marin, um, we've been going at this since 11 o'clock. Staff has been going at this even longer. And I am concerned about just um, us doing good work at this point right now. So I, I do hope that people will consider that uh, we could postpone um, the, today's discuss, discussion at this point and uh, just put this in place and vote by the 17th or the, at the 16th meeting. All right, Dr. Anderson, speaking to the motion. Thank you. Yes, speaking to the motion, um, from what I understand, and Mr. Malloy shared part of this, the reason why we are at this meeting is because at the last meeting, we it was requested that we have additional time to narrow down our, our priorities. So that is the only thing that I, I am thinking we were expecting to do this evening which is now down the priorities, particularly the state from 14 to um, a one pager, because Ms. Malloy shared that sometimes it is very helpful to have fewer items to speak to. And we had a very long conversation regarding aspirational issues versus those that could be acted upon uh, more quickly. So that's the intent of today's conversation for us to do that. And so that's what I was looking to do today, which is to narrow it down. If we do not want to take on that work because I get it. We've all been here a long time. So has staff. We also have some very trying and very important matters that are in the other work sessions that are already scheduled that really cannot be moved. We have return to school updates, program, program budget reviews, as well as the TJ work session. So all of those things are time sensitive. So if we are not at the place where we feel as if we can reduce those priorities from 14 to seven or eight, Perhaps we need to consider sending all of them forward instead of narrowing down and we can perhaps conclude this meeting. I just wanted to say that, but I would not be in support of adding another work session to do this work if this work session was scheduled. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. If I could just speak to that, yeah, it, it was, I think you and I have sh just shared some things. Um, it wasn't necessarily to narrow down. I think it was is to provide consensus. We now, we kind of separated into priorities and um, short term and long term. And um, as talking it through with Mr. Malloy, it was decided as we looked at it, um, and, and he did wordsmith a little bit to make them more concise. So um, I do the, want to just say this is very time sensitive too. Some of the other things, program budgets, we've got time on that. This legislative briefing must be even if we don't agree on all the priorities at every point, the, the, the packet has to be approved on the 5th or on the 16th. It can't be in progress and we can't change the date because we really have to make certain that we have the information out there in case there's something that we need to have pre-filed that will have a priority position. So I think that's very important for people to understand. So I just wanted to clarify that. and. Um, Still speaking to this motion, Ms. Corbett Sanders.
Thank you, Ms. Darinak Kofax, and it is certainly a pleasure to follow you because my comments uh, mirror yours. This work session is actually a out of cycle work session that the chair accommodated um, our request so that people had an opportunity to talk about um, the legislative priorities. I um, would urge people to either take the opportunity to address the legislative priorities tonight or provide, um, reach out to either Ms. Darinak Koufax or myself prior to November 5th so that we can try to accommodate them if you or uh, if you would like to make amendments to them. But I urge my colleagues that we need to get this adopted by November 5th if we are intending to influence the early filing of um, bills, which is always in our best interest to, uh, to do so with our um, delegation, because the delegation does have a limitation on how many bills they can carry. And the earlier we get to them, the higher likelihood our bills will be carried, will be for carrying. All right, speaking to this motion, Ms. Laura Jane Cohen. Um, I'd like to call the question and then if it should it fail, we have some, um, I think, potential other motions, but I, sort of the points being lost here of, of either doing this or not. All right, so the question has been called. Um, all those in favor of calling the question? Um, those in favor of calling the question are Ms. Omesh, Ms. Corbett Sanders, myself, Dr. Anderson, Dr., um, uh, Ms. Sizemore Heiser, Ms. Cohen, Mr. Frisch, Ms. Keys Gamara, Ms. Bukarski, Ms. McLaughlin, and Ms. Tolan. Is there, are there any no's to calling the question? Ms. Marin. And I believe that's 12. So um, the question has been called um, to vote on this amendment by Ms. Marin. And Ms. Marin, could you just for the record please restate it since I don't have it in front of me? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I'd like to say I am willing to adjust the dates that I said. So I don't know if I need to propose a new motion, but the motion is proposed phone to a certain time the consideration of these documents by the board and to move the board action scheduled currently for 11-5 to 12-3 at the earliest. But let it, let it stand like that, please. All right, all those in favor? Ms. Marin? All those opposed? Ms. Corbett Sanders, Ms. McLaughlin, Ms. Tolan, Ms. Omesh, uh, Ms. Dr. Anderson, Ms. Keys Gamara, Ms. Darinak Koufax, Mr. Frisch, Ms. Bukarski, Ms. Cohen, and um, Ms. Sizemore Heiser. So that motion fails. And may, um, as as the chair at this point in time, this is what I, I I would like to get back to. I do realize where we all are. We are at a point where we are we are tired and we are not doing our best work. That's where I agree. Um, what I would propose then is that we um, work. We if there are any questions on this for clarity, let's go for those first of all. And then we can work, as Ms. Corbett Sanders suggested, reaching out to us if you have questions, comments. I would like to keep November 5th as the date to approve our full packet, but then um, at that time, we can either we, we can either come to some agreement um, before because we have, have had some conversations prior to that, or we can Perhaps Dr. Anderson work with the chair to have a, another brief work session on this because it is time sensitive because of the November 23rd meeting with our NOVA delegation to have a brief work session where we could dialogue with each other on these priorities. So that's where I would propose we go now. So for that, um, I, I would ask if anybody here now has um, clarifying questions 
unless somebody has another motion. <laughs> but right now, I'm going to go for clarifying questions. Ms. McLaughlin. The only clarifying question I have is that um, we don't we don't have to have another work session, but why aren't we just postponing the vote to the next business meeting of November 16th? That gives us enough time to talk to each other and have well-crafted amendments. I worry that we could sit at the board table for hours next Thursday if we don't have a little more time to talk to each other. I, yes. I don't disagree. Um, Mr. Malloy, can you answer that question? Would it be okay for us to wait that long, November 16th? Uh, I honestly, I don't see any impediments to doing that. I, you'd still have adopt, you, you'd have final adoption of your legislative program in time for the briefing on the 23rd. We can turn around a finally adopted program very quickly. Um, the agenda for that meeting we would set after you had adopted. Um, so we, from a staff perspective, we'd definitely be able to accommodate that. Okay, I, I, I will ask our board clerks one more question. So we are operating with clarity here on November 16th. Um, is there, and, and the chair as well, but the clerks um, you might have it at your fingertips. The agenda for the 16th, would it allow for the, this change in schedule? Would there be time to discuss this at that board table on the 16th? Um, I can confirm that there will be time to do that. We do okay. have another item, which is a pretty significant presentation, um, but we do not have any other action item that I can see at this point. Perfect. So um, I, I I would um, propose that we 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 change then the voting on um, bringing bringing the totality of our package from um, I would propose moving it from November fifth through the sixteenth, and then since it appears that it would be difficult to have um, conversations, it would be difficult to have another work session to um, have draft to have priority position conversations for the state and federal positions um, as as a board offline and um, we will then bring all of that to um, fruition on the 16th when we vote is there a Kovacs point of clarification is that a motion that you're putting forward i believe it must be at this point <laughs> yes yes moving Moving um, uh, vote on the legislative packet from the 5th to the 16th and allowing for discussion um, offline on our priority positions. This is Mrs. Cohen. I'd be happy to second that. All right. Thank you. So that is the motion on the table right now. Um, I, I, I don't, I feel like I explained why I don't feel like I have to speak to anything else. Um, questions on this? Hands up or for questions. All right. I just, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the motion. I really would have appreciated if you could have perhaps done a friendly amendment or if another person had raised that this topic. This is essentially what I am getting at. I'm getting at making this more efficient. It's a shame that the board couldn't have figured this out when I proposed a very similar motion. Thank you, Ms. Merritt. Ms. Corbett Sanders. Just a quick question of Mr. Malloy. Are there any items in our legislative package that we believe or that you believe we need to have a legislature, legislator um, pick up and run with as far as a pre-filing bill? Um, I, think that, I think that there are a few items both on your pri this, this draft priority list you have but also on the uh, in the legislative program in general um, that we may want to, to try and seek sponsors for. Um, in terms of the legislative program in general, I'm thinking specifically about the, the issue of the 90-minute uh, driver's education course that a, a parent has to sit through um, with a student that uh, I think we need some legislative relief on that. We've identified some groups of students that have, uh, that for whom that's a, a pretty significant barrier. Um, so that would be an example of something out of the regular legislative program. And then I think in terms of your priorities, um, certainly uh, some of these pandemic-related funding resources and pandemic-related policy flexibilities are things that we may want to have people put in uh, legislation for uh, just to, to continue those flexibilities uh, beyond what the uh, state of emergency, because technically everything that's been done, all the flexibilities have been granted for the pandemic 
it will expire once the governor lifts the state of emergency. Now, what date that is, I can't possibly tell you, but they're not, they're certainly not permanent. So those would have to be, um, if those flexibilities were to continue on, they would have to be dealt with by the General Assembly. Um, so they're just examples on both sides. So those are two areas that um, we would benefit by having support tonight to at least give you the go ahead to reach out to members of the um, delegation to start on that pre-filing process. Because I guess I'm concerned that if we wait until the 16th on everything, we won't be able to get the, um, their attention on specific priorities for pre-filing. That would be helpful, I and mean, it's certainly it's not it, it's not a a a, a fatal impediment. Um, we can certainly have conversations with legislators now, and say that the board is considering the particular issues, and it's something that we may wish to have you put a uh, uh, pre filed bill in. Um, pre filed bills can be as general as the legislator asking legislative services to draft something very very you know, generically or. It can be an extremely specific, you know, we, we've already identified the specific code section of specific language. Um, they just have to have a drafting request in as of that date. Um, they still have all through December to go back and forth in terms of how the legislation looks. Um, but they have to have those, those, uh, those requests in by the, uh, the end of uh, November. And that would still give them enough time. So along those lines, can we, as a board, I have no problem delaying the actual vote as long as we can give you guidance to start that conver those conversations with members of our um, delegation so that we are able to um, have a certain amount of slots in their um, pre-filing initiatives. Because I'm very worried they, they do have a limitation on how many bills they can file. Correct, and actually this year will probably be even more limited than usual. Uh, we still don't know if they're gonna be meeting in person. We don't know if it's gonna be virtual. Uh, we don't know if it's gonna be a little bit of both. Uh, the, the special session, they were there in person, at least the Senate was there fully in person. All of their committee meetings, all of their subcommittee meetings were done virtually. Uh, the House was kind of a hybrid. They had some members there, some members at home. They, all, all their business they, they conducted virtually. Uh, as you've seen, it can take a little bit longer. So you know, they may want, wish to limit the, the scope of legislation uh, during the regular session the same way they did during the special session. So Ms. Um, Darnak Kofax, would you um, amend your motion to also give instruction to uh, Mr. Malloy to begin some of those conversations so we under, so it, we at least keep our place in line. One of the better terms. I'm fine with that. Just um, just give me specific, just amending the, the motion to add, allowing Mr. Malloy flexibility to talk to our Northern Virginia delegation. The board is considering this priority issue. In advance of the 16th. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Malloy. I'm sorry, Ms. Malberg, did you need assistance? Ms. Ms. Corbett Sanders, can you just work with Ms. Malberg offline so I can get through the other questions here? Sure. Because I think this this hopefully will pass. Um, Mr. Frisch. Apologies, I was stretching. <laughs> Oh, you were just stretching. You weren't. Yeah, I didn't mean to have my hand up. I apologize. Yeah, you're stretched. Yeah, Kofax, the date's wrong. It's saying December 16th. It should read November 16th. November 16th. I can't, I can't amend this. So do I need to call you directly? I was trying to change that date. Ms. Mulberg, do I need to call you or how do you want to do that? I just sent this to you an email. If you can just change it and email it back, please. Thank you. Ms. Cohen, do you have another question or comment to your second? Or did I not let you speak to that? I'm sorry. I think I know it's, it's fine. Uh, everybody's spoken out. I get it. Um, no, I just was trying to say, I think Karen's is just a separate amendment, but it's, it's totally fine. Okay. All right, well, well, let's see if this 
Well, do you want it separate or I mean, I'm okay with adding it because it's just conversations that Mr. Malloy is having anyway with the delegations when he sees them and works with them. So well, no, I just some people were being real sticklers about Roberts earlier. So I was just oh, thank you. in that spirit. Um, so right. my goal was to call the question. So um, whenever I have the opportunity with the new document. Oh, all right. Um, I, I think we are ready to vote. I think there's no one left um, with now. So I'm yes, the, the question has been called. So I am going to um, even though you, you just, just told me to follow Robert's rule, since there is no one else in line, I'm going to follow suit of um, just taking the vote at this point, since there is no one left to talk. Um, so all those in favor that we move to revise the calendar to change the discussion of the legislative package from November 5th to November 16th, allowing for offline discussion of our priority positions. Now, oh, and I say this, um, Ms. Corbett Sanders, while you work on that, maybe we should just vote on this, I think. Um, it should be discussion and adoption so, of the legislative package. No, it's not adoption. We're adopting it on the 16th. It's yeah, not, not an adoption. Allow for offline yeah. discussion of our priority positions. And that well, allows in that. Look above Ms. Darinak Koufax. Mm -hmm. It says change the discussion of the legislation, legislative package. It should be changed to postpone the discussion and adoption of the legislative package. Point of information. Yes, ma'am. Ms. 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 Omesh. Um, so if we're moving this to the 16th and you're mentioning we're going to be adopting it on the 16th, would that preclude the feedback from being included in whatever ends up being voted on? No, I mean, we'll discuss it at the table and we can discuss it offline as well. Right. So the, the, dis the discussion at the table is going to be followed by a vote though, right? To Correct. adopt. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, today's an opportunity to discuss it if we want to do that, but that's fine. Thank you. I think, yeah, I think Ms. Omesh, we're, we're, that's why we're here at this point. I think people aren't um, in a in a place after some, nearly seven hours that we are going to discuss it. So right now, the um, motion on the table, I move to revise the calendar to change the... No, that's not right either. Change the calendar, change the discussion and adoption of the legislative package from November 5th to November 16th. It's allow, allowing for offline discussion of our priority positions. I think everybody understands the, the sentiment of this. All those in favor of this and then discussion will cease today and this meeting will be adjourned just so you know what happens next. So all those in favor. Ms. Aaron at COFAX, I thought we were going to have the second discussion about allowing Mr. Malloy to speak to the Northern Virginia delegation. I assuming that allowing for offline discussion of our priority positions was both with the board and with the delegation. With that understanding, I'm fine. Thank you. So all those in favor are Ms. Corbett Sanders, Ms. Cohen, Ms. McLaughlin, Mr. Frisch, Ms. Rajna Sizemore-Heiser, Ms. Darnak Kofax, Ms. Melanie Marin, Ms. Karski, Ms. Keys Gamara, Ms. Tolan. Um, all of those uh, voting no. I'm sorry. Voting no is Ms. Omesh. And I believe that's everyone who's vote. Any abstentions? Sorry, I couldn't count that fast. All uh, right, um, so that passes. I look forward to talking to you, my colleagues. Um, I know Ms. Keys Gamar and I, will. we will work out a schedule to uh, reach out to you. Um, and um, I appreciate your time. And I know um, we had a great intent to do this and have a robust discussion. And I think that can happen um, offline as well as um, when we come to the table now on November 16th. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mr. Malloy. 
And um, Stuart yes, Koufax. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it is that hour. I understand. Um, I just wanted to clarify the process for for board members uh, as we go towards your final adoption. You're you're going to do final adoption on the 16th. Mm -hmm. Typically, what hap would happen between the work session and final adoption is if individual board members wish to bring individual issues to the legislative program to the document that that you will have in front of you. Um, they would typically bring them as amendments at the board table for that meeting. Um, I make the offer every year. I will make the exact same offer this year. Uh, I'm more than happy to work with anyone uh, in terms of crafting legislate in, in terms of crafting uh, potential amendment language, identifying where it may, may fit within the legislative program. I'm more than happy to do that. And also, since we have an extended period of time, uh, members are more than welcome, obviously, to, to speak with you and, and Ms. Corbett Sanders about the priorities. Right. But I'm also happy to find time to speak to anybody. Um, if, if, if anybody wants to have a kind of a second round of the of the one-on-one, -on -one to use, more than happy to set aside time uh, to talk to the individual board members um, about what's a priority document and uh, and those things going forward. Thank you, Mr. Malloy, for for adding that and clarifying that. Yes, I I knew that was an option, but I think it's important that the public and our my my colleagues hear that Mr. Malloy is the person to go to to help you draft your policy statement should you have amendments. And also, um, but um, he, Karen and I will work together to ensure that we're all on the right page when we come here again on the 16th and we look forward to having discussions with you all. So thank you all um, for getting through this and all uh, this work session is adjourned. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Everybody.